Well, it started it started with a, a, a band called Left Here that, that myself and Brian, our drummer and clutch, our bass player, uh, we all got together my, was my sophomore year of high school, I guess it was. Yeah. My sophomore year of high school, we got together just because there was a battle of bands in my school, and we were like, let's try and do this or whatever, and I I kind of gotten the, the, the bug to start playing with the band because I had been writing songs for a long time and never really done the band thing. So we got together. Um, we won at our high school, and then Josh uh, went to a neighboring high school where they were hosting the interdistrict or the district-wide battle of the bands. Like all the schools that had a battle of the bands winner went to Josh's school, and and there was like mother the ultimate all, battle the of the mother bands. Mother of all battle of bands. So so we went there. We were uh, we were beaten by the Maybe Daydreams, a swing band, who fronted by a guy named Turtle who ended up being on TV and he's in a a Dude Where's times. My Car. Dude yeah. Where's My Car. One of Turtles. Uh, yeah, better moments. I so he's doing well. No, he's he's actually really, no, he's really good. he's a really good guy. He's actually a good good actor as well. But um, but no, so we uh, we did that, and then that band broke up pretty much right afterwards. Our our only goal was to like play this battle of the bands, and we kind of didn't expect to win, but it was it was fun. We had a good time, and then that's how I, how I met Josh through like some mutual friends, and he was hosting. He was like on the, his uh, student body. He was like the student body, whatever that. Something you were, I don't remember what you were, but uh, but no, and then. We kind of started talking and hanging out like later in that year, and then um, my junior year we started just like playing like jamming out like Radiohead cover songs, and like kind of we originally had this idea that we were gonna we were gonna get like a sax player and go play coffee shops and be like really artistic, and then we decided not to do that. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> One day, well, I think we just like we realized we were like playing all, pretty much all rock music, and we we're like, why are we gonna go meet a saxophone player so we can play like jazz, which none of us were really that good at. So yeah, we, we were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were like, you know, we had this like great idea, like we could wear berets or something and pull it off and you know do that, but it yeah, didn't. Uh, we couldn't. We couldn't. So so no, I called Brian and Clutch, and then we had a, a another guitarist at the time who I went to school with named Ruben, who was later replaced by William Tell, who was. Later been replaced by Bobby Raw, uh, a buddy of ours from River City High. Yeah, but, uh, the guitarists in our band are much like uh, the drummers in Spinal, Spinal Tap. Tap. Yeah, the, the the other guitars. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you you are <laughs> well, a lot yeah. like the drummer for Spinal Tap. Yes. I'm Will Randall. A little blob. Yes. On a stool. Nobody's gonna understand. Yeah. That See Spinal Tap. It's a great Spinal movie. Tap. See yeah. the movie. Check that movie out. Yeah, um, but no, so we just kind of started. We'll give you the really long version of the story. No, so we started playing shows like churches and schools and wherever we could, literally wherever we could find a gig. And then the band was about to break up because everybody was leaving to go to college, or Josh and Ruben were leaving to go to college. Uh, Clutch and Brian were leaving to go to community college. Um, Not even leaving. And I was still in high school. <laughs> and um, and no, they were all about to leave. We put together this show. We had never really played like a club gig. We tried to get it set up in a club. And uh, that no club would take us, so we, we set it up on our own, promoted our own show for like a week or so, and like over 300 people came, so we were like, wow, this is pretty crazy, and was, you know, we, and then I called this club the Coach House, which is this, you know, funny little club that's like basically in our backyards, and I was like, we just sold 300 tickets to a show we promoted ourselves, they're like, if you sell 300 tickets, you can headline, <laughs> so that became like our home for the next year and a half, pretty much, yeah. that venue, like they had a, a series of venues that they kept putting us in, and we would sell tickets out of you know uh, you know at, in high school and so like I was I was a senior in high school so I would just create these little ticket networks and get kids to buy tickets for me and stuff and, and ended up it ended up really working we definitely exploited our friends to the to the like and fullest families. extent yeah like we the, had a really old crowd in the early days because we would make our parents sell tickets <laughs> to their friends and stuff just so we could get work and stuff yeah. yeah actually we have I mean we have a lot of our success to owe to our like immediate friends and family oh, and totally. also the fact that um that you know it's not like the, the five of us at the time were all like super good friends. Like we, we became really great friends, but we all kind of had completely different groups of friends, so we yeah. could all exploit different groups, <laughs> and therefore, you know, made this big it, it tied soiree it. of yeah. It was, it was wild. It's like we would. It, it just started. People weren't. I don't even know if people really even liked our band. It just started because we just pressure the hell out of our friends. We'd be like, "Come on, four dollars. What do you have to do this Friday night?" You know what I and mean? Most people would have a really great time because yeah. you know there was they'd see everybody they knew. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, it was a big party. It was you know it was like yeah. an excuse to go and hang out. So, but no, it eventually just kind of developed from there. We started uh, we started playing tons of shows and and eventually kind of the club thing just started developing around. You know, all of a sudden it was like we started going like, "Whoa, it's." Not all our friends in the audience, you know, and that, it, which was really rewarding. And then finally, uh, drive-through contacted us, and we had kind of been talking to a couple other labels, but we had a, 
you know, we met with Richard and Stephanie. They came down. We didn't have a show set up for like a month, and they were like, "We want to see you guys play." They drove down to you know from from the valley all the way down to where we were in South Orange County, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. And and they uh, they they rolled into our garage, and we had a, like a garage concert for them, and like just a handful of our friends and stuff. And they just hung out and listened, and and uh, they offered us a deal like on the spot. Which, Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, and then and then we left to go play at my friend's 18th birthday party. In her yeah. basement. <laughs> right was, after that, we're like, this and is nobody has a basement in California. No, I know. Weird. It's just ironic. <laughs> yeah. But no, we got it. We, we were, we were laughing. We are, on the day that we were offered our first record contract, we were mm. schlepping our gear into this girl's uh, into this girl's uh, basement to play her her birthday party. Yeah. But um, no, it's it's been a pretty amazing trip. You know what I mean? It's really been gradual. Nothing has come like it. It's never been with us. Like so all of a sudden, one morning we woke up and this happened. You know, it's like we. You know, we. We've tried to work our asses off, you know, and earn every every bit of it. And truthfully, we've had to work our asses off to do it because it's never, you know, a lot of those common mainstream areas like radio and 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 all those things never really fully came into place for us. And we've we've had just the, this amazing fan base that's that's really driven kind of everything that everything that we've done. And they, they've kept it going for us really. And we've always tried to appreciate it too. I think that's the coolest thing about it, you know that I see not, not only mainly when I you know looking at the other guys in my band is that I see how much all of us really appreciate our fans and know that you know none of us are kidding ourselves you know we all know that it's it's them that put us here and that it's not you know that we're not like we're, we're extremely lucky we just know that uh, do you guys have any um, I guess a couple of questions uh, where do bands play if there's no basements? In, where do you guys? Oh, it's, you gosh. have to be. I mean, you have to be pretty yeah. ambitious. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I have a lot of kids come up to me and be like, "Dude, I can't get a show." Blah blah blah. And and, and I always want to feel bad for them, but I, I I feel like every band has been in that position, and it's like, if you don't have the, if if you don't have it within you to like figure it out, you probably shouldn't be a band. Or or if you or that being said, you probably shouldn't be a band trying to be a professional band. You know, I had a guy sitting we we played this college show last night. This guy comes up to me, he's like, So uh like what did you make tonight? You know, he asks me, I'm like, uh, I don't know, I think it's kinda of tacky to talk about what we made. He's like, look, you know, four figures, five figures, like this guy's like sitting I'm like I'm like, I'm you know, I'm not gonna go. He's like, well I just want to know because I I want to get into this. And I was like and I just looked at him. And, yeah, I looked at him. I said, I'm, I, I, and he says, he's like, he's like, we're thinking about doing the. Me and my band are thinking about doing this show next year or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> really? I'm like, well, you know, I really what I what I would <laughs> recommend to you that is, if you're gonna try and get into this business, you don't do it because you want money. Because, you know, <laughs> you're gonna spend it, a lot of time <laughs> without it. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, I mean, it's like we're we're really lucky that it's like we've been doing this for <clears throat> six years and we're finally clearing a paycheck. You know what I mean? And it's like we're finally not living at our parents' house. But it's like, yeah. it. But the truth was, our goal. You know, we never sat there and we're like, how do we get money? You know what I mean? It was like I think we knew that that money is something that comes with with dedication and actually working to to build something that that you're proud of and and hopefully that will be you know one of the rewards but you know one of many rewards which go along with just playing shows that are you know a size that you can really look out and go wow there's a lot of people here and 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 build something that people actually come out to see so yeah it's it's a it's a funny thing the the way that people perceive this this industry but it's 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 something you really have to love and you have to do knowing that there's a chance that it's not going to work out and it's not going to be you know it may not be you know this rock and roll lifestyle that it you know you you kind of dreamed about but ultimately you, you do it because the seconds that you're in it are, are, are good and, that, and that's why you do it you know not for the long haul really yeah you don't do it for the money you do it for the experience it's yeah. like I mean I mean I remember back gosh like you know two three years ago when we really started touring we were in a van and I remember that first year or that almost that first two years we were never home Oh no! And like I mean, I we mean, either were recording a record or on tour for on tour. three years yeah. straight, pretty much. Who we'll booked your tour? Our agent. Our you know, agent. we, we at had that a, time we got one. Yeah, we Finally. had this amazing agent who like, you know, he he fell in love with our band. We had a, a guy, Sean Striegel, this guy who worked at the House of Blues in Anaheim, who loved our band. He he was a part of the Coach House Galaxy, that same venue that I was talking about earlier, and he really f supported the band and gave us a show at the House of Blues where we sold like a thousand tickets out of our pockets you know what yeah. i mean like they didn't sell a single ticket on Ticketmaster. we did all of it and like all of a sudden you know this you know this this agent our, our, our buddy josh now he kind of he came down and was really blown away and he was like 
you know, before we had a record deal, anything it was like, I want to represent your yeah. band, and he's killed for us ever since. And he, you know, continues and, and, to. Yeah. And it takes, yeah, and it takes. I mean, it takes people like that. You know, there are people in this industry, surprisingly enough, who will actually support bands that that don't have you know dollar signs written all over them all the time. And, and you know, that was for us. I mean, his his work is, was probably the most important of anything, getting us on the road and playing when we when we were nobody playing 150 to 200 shows a year. You know, that's and, been the only thing that we've that's gone extremely well for us in in. And don't take no, that as a bad thing. It's, 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 it's been, that's the saying, one thing that really matters. That's the one ultimately. thing to us that, like, you know, like, there's a lot of bands that, you know, like, press is awesome to them, you know, like the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, you know, they're on the cover of every magazine. Or, you know, you look at, you know, there's a lot of bands that MTV is great too. And, you know, and the one thing that's been, you know, and not that, you know, other parts of the industry haven't been good to us at certain times or another, but, you know, the only thing that's consistently paid off for our band is touring. And, which is actually probably. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, it's, you know, it's yeah. definitely the coolest part of being in a band. You see a lot of band. I mean, you'll see a lot of radio bands. We used to, we used to have to open like when we would play at this, these these venues. Like they would bring in like the lo like the radio band of the hour or whatever, and then they'd call us to like open for them because we were like they didn't have a, a tour package get together, and you know they knew we'd sell a lot of tickets, and it's like. It's uh, it was always funny because we were like just this like dinky little high school band, but like we could somehow manage to get all these people to come out to shows, and it was like it's really shocking when you when you realize when they pull the curtain off a of radio and it, it occurs to you like a lot of these bands that have sold half a million records or a million records can't get two hundred people to to walk in the door to a club to pay and see them. And they're really bad. Yeah, I mean, well, some, <laughs> you know, like some a lot of them. Like, I'm not, yeah, we're not saying. I mean, it's like I'm not saying that's that's the case of all radio bands. Yeah, by any means. yeah. Like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not like this anti-radio guy. It's not my platform by any means. But but it, it's it's a wild thing. It's like touring and, and touring and the other mainstream avenues that, that come with music are two completely separate events. And then but touring is the most real. And it, and I I think ultimately it will last the longest for a band if they're willing to work on if they're willing to work it. When we did Warped Tour in two thousand two. Uh, we made a we made kind of a band rule um, early on, which was it was a really hard rule to keep. But, <laughs> but it paid off, you know, tenfold to us. And like our the rule was that we each had to spend at least two hours at the merch booth every day. And after playing a half an hour set, plus we had a signing every day. Like we would we would schedule a time where all of us would sign. So that that would go an hour. So we had like at least three hours of being at the merch booth. And the way I figured day. out was really that, that there wouldn't be a time when there wouldn't at least be one guy from the band behind the, behind the booth helping our merch guy sell merch and, and signing stuff for people who wanted and, it. And meeting, and I think that, you know, to this day, we still, I mean, that was like two years ago, and we, I get pictures all the time from that tour, of like, yeah. us, you know, like, like, you know, in Kansas or something. They're like, oh, yeah, that's a picture you took with me. And I think, I mean, Kevin, the way the way that that tour is set up, I mean, it's like, let's be honest, it's like our band is very far from a punk rock band, you know, it's like, we've historically, you know, played with tons of those bands, which is mind-boggling to us, and so, like, we're really lucky, because that, that scene has just nurtured our band to no end, you know, granted, we'll always be, you know, a, a, a lot softer than a lot of those bands, and we'll have that perception, and there will be people within that scene who won't accept us for that reason, but, I mean, we, I mean, what, it was like six months before the Warp Tour, Kevin, Kevin booked us on that tour. You know, we had, if you see Jordan at the time, looked like it might become a big single, and it never did, but he was like, he kind of snatched us up quickly or whatever and, and put us on the tour, and we almost felt bad when we showed up and it was like, we didn't have a hit, and we were just like, oh, do 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 you know? But it was almost like this big challenge to us. It was like, you, you either go out there every day and earn it and really work your ass off and, and get kids to like your band so that this, this guy who took a huge chance on you can see that it was worth taking a chance, and I mean, I think you know Kevin. Kevin Lyman, in a lot of ways, was almost like a mentor without actually like you know we. It's like we like talk to him all day long or every day. You know, he didn't really mentor us, but just by existing in in that sense, it was like we you know we we tried to make him proud of us. I mean, that sounds really silly, but it's kind of true. And it's like and we and we you know and try to make ourselves proud, and we we wanted to do well on that tour, and it and each day we would. We would sit down every day and go like, "How bad did we suck today? What do we have to do? You know what I mean to get better?" Because it's like, there's so many great bands on that tour. There's so many, and there are so many bands to see on that tour that, you, not say you have to be competitive, but you have to you have to raise your your show to a certain level to even make a kid want to buy your T-shirt instead of somebody else's, or come over and meet you instead of somebody else, or or come to your stage, you know. And 
it was weird because we started that tour and nobody knew us and like halfway through people started talking about our band on the website on the warped website and like by the end of the tours like we got to play like the sunset slot on the last day in detroit and it was like it was I don't know, like I seriously, it sounds gay, but I have like chills just thinking about it. Like, just like it was one of the most amazing experiences. It was like, it used to be like nobody would come up on the stage to watch our band, and, and, and we wouldn't necessarily have a huge crowd in every city. And like, by that last show, it was like we had this enormous audience just going crazy, and, and like the stage was lined with all these people who, like, truthfully at the beginning of the tour, like, didn't really weren't really into us and, and we're not shy about telling us either you know what I mean? we had a lot of people on like the, the tour the, 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 the metal militia guys, guys we had metal a, militia we, guys yeah, totally. there's, like, there's these guys these guys <laughs> the, the metal militia guys well there was a couple I, I, I don't want to say that we were all supported them, yeah, by yeah, all the yeah, metal yeah. guys but there was a couple guys who like that day like we we walked on the stage and we see these like guys who like fairly intimidating on that tour and like you know we go walk off stage and one of these guys came up it was like the biggest compliment we could get he was just like you know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people talked a lot of shit on your band at the beginning of this tour. He's like, I, I figured I had to come out and see it for myself. He's like, you guys ruled. That was awesome. And we're just, and I, I mean, it was stuff like that that really made it pay off. Because we, you know, we work hard, you know. It's like, you never know. Everybody's not going to like your music, you know. But, but our hope is that if people come see our show, at least they'll go, these guys are good performers. They play a tight show. They do a good job, you know. What, regardless of what they think of our music, and that's that's kind of always been, I think, our goal is like at least get at least try and get some respect if people take the time to 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 watch or listen to what we do, you know. So, and that tour taught us that. Yeah, we we walked off that tour a completely different band than when we walked on it. You totally. Know, like we, you know, we were just so much so much better. It Every weathers you. That tour weathers. It, you. it really does. You get off of that tour and you're just you know you. You're so tired, and you're but you're but at the end you're you play the last day, and you're like, gosh, I'm really so much out. better at what I'm doing right now than I was two months ago. When you play sixty shows in like sixty five days or whatever the hell it <laughs> yeah, is, like yeah. it's a pretty. I mean, you know, I mean, you're doing this thing, you know what the schedule's like. It's like, it's it's really grueling. We were lucky to do it so early, like I mean, do the whole tour so early in our career because it was like we were just like we're on tour. Oh my gosh, this is great. But, that was our first but, bus too. Yeah, and like all these all these <laughs> other bands who had like done it for like years at a time are just like you can just tell we're like. God, we gotta figure out something to do. I can't hang out in this parking lot any damn you know, any longer. You know, it's just getting we're like yeah. And we were and we're sitting out there like woo. This we is did awesome. a case of beer a day. Yeah, yeah we were so thrilled. <laughs> we never. We were like rider. Like they're like you don't get a rider contracts. We're like we don't even have a rider contract. What are you talking about? So yeah, and no, it's good and it keeps you humble. I mean that tour more than anything. It's like yeah. you take you like especially if you do that whole tour. I mean I I find that most bands who have done that tour from that moment forward. The way that that is applied, you know, they apply themselves to the rest of their touring. It's like bands ha learn that you have to work hard for what you do, and and that you have to earn it. And that is, I mean, I think that's how that tour was intentionally structured. Was that nobody, nobody's better than anybody else. The 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 biggest band on the tour could play the first slot of the day, and the smallest band on the tour could have to sit there and play the last slot of the day. You know, which is both are kind of a pain in the ass. You know, but. But it, it, you learn how to do it, and it puts you in all sorts of situations. It's like boot camp for a band, you know. Every you get lots of kids there. Yeah, and every great situation and every shitty situation you could encounter, you encounter on that tour. Yeah, like not just on stage. You know what I mean? It, with with fans, with hecklers, with with you know bus drivers, with other bands. I mean, every everything good and bad is completely covered from start to finish. So it's a very well-rounded experience. I mean, it makes bands. Well